Good morning. I would like to welcome you to worship on Pastor Nathan Key serving the people of Trinity Lutheran Church in Laramie, Wyoming. Thank you for joining us. Today is the second Sunday after Christmas, and we continue to celebrate this Christ, this Christ who is born among us. We say, Emmanuel, God with us, that God continues to come into our lives. Well, today we have a different Christmas story. You know the traditional Christmas stories. But today our Christmas story comes from the first chapter of John. And for those of you who know the first chapter of John, this is an interesting Christmas story. So thank you for joining us in worship.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Jesus, our Lord, came into an indifferent world, yet his life revealed the inner thoughts of many. Let us confess our sins before God and one another, that we may receive release from our sin. Merciful God, we confess that we have not lived as your faithful children. We have kept silent in the midst of prejudice and hatred. We have not been idle in the face of violence and injustice. We have not been a light to the nations and our lives have not revealed your glory. Forgive us, merciful God. Repair the ugliness of our sin and restore in us your beautiful grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved of God, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, God covers us with the robe of righteousness. Know that you are forgiven in Jesus Christ and live as God's beloved. Amen. We have a litany for the incarnation. God looked around and saw the world which he has made a long time ago, and what he saw upset him. In one place, preachers were talking about peace. Priests were talking about peace. Prophets were talking about peace. So much talking, but there was no peace. There was only talking to hide the noises of war. And God sighed a heavy sigh. In another place, people were building, building banks and storehouses, building monuments to their own greed, building ladders for their careers, so much building while the poor became poorer and the scale of justice were biased to the rich. God sighed a heavy sigh. In another place, people were doing their own thing, doing their own thing about loving, doing their own thing about trusting, doing their own thing about healing, so much doing their own thing, but the truth was that nothing was being done, for all were divided, suspicious and lonely. And God sighed a heavy sigh. In another place, people were worshiping, worshiping what their hands had made, worshiping what their money had bought, worshiping what their fantasies had imagined. So much worshiping, but no faith and no hope and no God. And God sighed. A heavy sigh. Then God had a brainwave and said, I'll send. I'll send. And God said, I'll go there myself. But how? God called a meeting of the three selves, the creator, the word, and the spirit. I move that the word goes, said the creator. I second that, said the spirit. Wait a minute, said the word. But there was no minute, for there was no time. So the word became flesh, tiny and frail flesh, bone of our bone, flesh of our fle flesh, the son of Joseph and Mary.
The Lord be with you and also with you. We pray together. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our readings for the second Sunday after Christmas. The first one is from Jeremiah. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble, for I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it to the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and insight. He has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he sent forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, 
to the praise of his glory. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born, not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today is the second Sunday after Christmas. You see, most of us today know that they don't know that there are three sets of Christmas stories in the Gospels. The first two Christmas stories are really well known, the ones from Matthew and Luke. But the other Christmas story, in my opinion, is from the Gospel of John. Right? I mean, the first two, Matthew and Luke, are really familiar to us, but the one from John is not. Right? I mean, we know Matthew and Luke. We know the stories. We can visualize these stories in our minds. We know the details of Zechariah and Elizabeth, Mary and Joseph, a baby in the manger, the sheep and the shepherds, the angels and the angel choirs, the wise men and their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But the third story... Christmas story, in my opinion, from the Gospel of John is a bit different. We usually have a hard time picturing and understanding the Gospel story in John. And with us, many of us couldn't even recall some of those points. So today, the second Sunday after Christmas, we focus on the Christmas story from John. You see, this is what happened at Christmas for John. I will call this the theological version. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. But he was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. But to all who have received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. 
the Christmas story, in my opinion, the theological version, and the word became flesh and lived among us. You see, God has used words many different times throughout the history of God's people. That God's word was a part of God's history for centuries before God sent us Christ. You think about all the words that are spoken by God in the Old Testament or the Hebrew scriptures. But at some point, God stopped using words. And instead, God chose action and sent us Jesus, not only to give us his life, but to transform our life. You see, there are moments in our lives where our actions speak louder than words, like showing up to a basketball game for your grandchildren or for your own child, or going to see someone in the hospital when we used to be able to do so before COVID, or maybe canceling a work trip so that you could be home for your anniversary. I mean, there are so many ways our actions touch someone's heart more than our words. I mean, being married for 21 years now and having children, many times words do nothing. You see what I do, the actions that I do truly show how I love. And the same thing for my family, my children. I mean, if I told them that I love them every day, but my actions were confusing. You see, as a pastor, there's a term that we use for this. We call it the ministry of presence, breathing one another's air, the ministry of presence. You see, sometimes when we are walking alongside someone whose spouse has died, the words that we say to one another are often lost, but what remains is our presence. They know that we were there. What is remembered is that you stood right next to them during that moment of grief and pain. So sometimes our presence is deeper than the words we say. It's like my wedding day, right? I mean, married 21 and a half years now. I can remember a few of the words that were spoken on that day. But what I remember is that my wife was standing right next to me. What I remember is seeing Pastor Chuck reading and blessing our relationship together. I remember my brother and my friends standing up for me. I remember their presence the most. You see, words are good. And God uses words and has given us the beautiful gift of words, but God also uses action. You see, with our text this morning, wherever you see the word, the word, <laughs> I invite you to put in the name of Jesus instead. So let's read it again. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. He was in the beginning with God. That all things came into being through Jesus, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. That Jesus was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. But to all who received him and believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of flesh or of the will of man, but were born of God. And Jesus became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. You see, I hope you can hear this gospel, reading it over a few times in the sermon today, that you can hear that this gospel proclaims that Jesus was there in the beginning in Genesis. <laughs> that he was in the beginning. That all things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. Now we celebrate Christmas, and so often we think about Christmas as only being about 2,000 years old when Jesus was born as a human being. But Jesus goes a lot further back than just the last 2,000 years. That the text says that Jesus was there in the beginning of it all. That Jesus just didn't start in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But Jesus was in Genesis. I mean, that's pretty profound. That Jesus was there in the beginning of it all. 
And this means that our God has been tied to creation, that Jesus has been tied to humanity from the beginning. That all things came into being through Christ. That everything that is living and breathing, and this includes you today, was born out of God's love. This means that our God knows us. <laughs> that our God knows us intimately. Because God was there in the beginning of it all. I mean, just think of the, the hospital room. You can't remember when you were born. Possibly your parents were there. Sometimes your dad was not there. But a nurse was there. A doctor was there. But Jesus was also there in the beginning when you took that first breath. That Genesis says that God breathed into us the breath of life, that God was there when you took that first great, wonderful breath. That Jesus was there in the beginning of it all. You see, I love Christmas. I love the Christmas stories. And I can visualize them in my mind. I can see Mary and Joseph and that donkey walking through the desert. I can see the manger and the sheep and the angels and the shepherds and the wise men and their gifts. But in John's gospel, we don't have this romantic view. We, there's no angels, no manger, no Mary, Joseph, no gold, frankincense, and myrrh, none of this. What we have is Jesus. And Jesus was God. And Jesus was in the beginning. That all things came into being through him. And what has come into being in him was life, your life. I said this is the uh, Christmas story, the theological version. So Merry Christmas and God be with you. Amen. We share our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, that we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life 
of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the songs of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O glorious God, fill your church with joy. Let your faithful people live as beacons of your redemption. Give wisdom and courage to your church that it may speak with boldness and confidence, even when words of mercy are met with scorn. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. And show us your faithfulness in the rising and the setting of the sun. Place wonder into our hearts of those who search the skies and explore the heavens, curb waste and pollution, that all might have clean air to breathe. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. And God, come quickly with your healing power to all who seek love and support and restoration. Dispel fears and shadows. Restore broken relationships and mend broken hearts. Bring relief to those who are sick or struggling. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. And God, send traveling mercies upon all who journey home by other roads. Guard refugees and immigrants and asylum seekers. Protect families fleeing conflict in their homelands or abuse in their own homes. Tend to those who have no place to lay their heads. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. And account, according to the boundless riches of grace, through Christ you draw all your saints from the least to the greatest to your heavenly places. As you created all things, make all things new again in the splendor of your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. And God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Here, the season after Christmas, we gather for communion yet again. And I invite you to take out your bread, your wine, your crackers, your juice, and to share and to lift those elements up for the words of institution. And like always here at Trinity, all of you are welcome to join this feast of God. So in the night to which he's betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. So Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so like we have done, I invite you to share the gift of this meal with all those who are present in your home or wherever you are. To share and to lift up 
and to say, body of Christ given for you, body of Christ given for you. And after everybody shares with the bread, take the juice or the wine that you have and to share it with all those and to say the beautiful words, blood of Christ shed for you, blood of Christ shed for you. And so now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit keep you in his light and truth and love now and forever. Amen.